Has it started? Hey, everyone. Welcome into the Sports Fanatic News Sportscast. I am Joe Borig, joined by E Money, a very special guest. As this is our NHL award show as we wrap out the season, we're going to talk about the opinionated awards since some obviously the statistical base. You're just going to get that as your stats fall, which we know who's going to get that. Um, but Connor McDavid. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but unless if Drake scores 30 points in what a game, do they even have more than one game left? <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, but so yeah, that's going to be McDavid. But uh, I'm here with the money. We're going to go right into it. I told you in the video with Steele and Pirlo, go check that out. That I believe the Vezina, mostly because he never won one. And I think sometimes awards go more to we have to get this guy an award before he retires, like they did with Giordano with the Norris. Um, that's why I went with Flurry there, not because I don't think Vasilevsky's the best goaltender in the world right now. He is, but he's going to win again. So you don't, I don't think they need to worry about that too much. He'll be back. Mm-hmm. With Flurry will be back. And then the right. Jack Adams, I think, is between Quinville and Brindamore, where Quinville is the surprise team. Brindamore has the team that's put together. But he kept getting better and better each year. And mm-hmm. I feel like Brindamore deserves one. And Coach Q already has one. So that's why I went with Rob Brindamore. Mm-hmm. But uh, you have uh, your Jack Adams and a Vezina. What are your thoughts on those two restored here? Um, well, first off, I'd just like to say two things. Thank you for having me on here. And second off, I kind of screwed up your introduction. I was getting a little antsy. Uh, for those that know me in real life, I'm like the most impatient person ever. So I'm trying to work on that. Um, I just love to talk about hockey. Um, anyway, so with the Vesna, I was watching that video with you, Steele, and Perlo, and it was an awesome video, probably one of my favorite ones. Um, you all made some fantastic points. It's crazy to think that Marc-Andre Fleury has never won a Vesna. I don't think he's ever been a Vesna finalist either. I don't think he's ever been voted top three. Uh, I think his highest was That's four? fourth or fifth or something. It had, it had to have been four with his first year at Vegas because he was fire that year. Um, it's just weird to like think that because Fleury's been awesome um, a good majority of his career. And if Vegas won the Cup in 2018, no doubt about it, he would have won the Conn Smythe hands down. Like me as a Caps fan, he was the number one concern for me. Um, so with that being said, I think people kind of look at it differently with what Steele was saying. And that's he a finished great fifth point. his first year in Vegas. Oh, fifth. Okay. Fifth, yeah. uh, I knew it was like fourth or fifth. So I think people look at it differently. I could, I could see that. I mean, Flurry to me, should finish top three. The Vesna is super, super tight, in my opinion. I think it's the tightest one to call because you have Vassy, Flurry, Varlamov. Grubauer has been solid. Soros has been hot. Um, I mean, I think Soros would probably finish fifth if I had to do like one through five, whatever. I'm not going to do that, but just saying. Um, for me, I still look at it as like, okay, who is the best goaltender this year? And to me, it's like Vassy by like this much. Uh, he's played more games. He's had more wins. He's had a better even strength save percentage. He has less really bad starts. Um, the save percentage overall is almost exactly the same. Same thing with like GAA. Um, he, he faces more shots per 60 minutes than the other guys. So to me, it's really just splitting hairs. I would give it to Vassi. Um, I think it's also going to help that he just won it last year. And I think a lot of people think that he's overall the best goaltender in all of hockey. So I think all those things there are going to favor him. I think he'll finish first with Vesna. I would vote for him for Vesna. Um, I could see Flurry. I can see Varlamov. I think they would be the top three. Um, and then Jack Adams, I would have to give it a Coach Q just because Florida was just such a massive surprise. Um, then they lose Ekblad for the year, their best defenseman. They're going 37, 14, and 5. 79 points, second place in the Central Division. Um, oh, wow, they're on a six-game win streak. Holy cow. They, they're yeah, they're, 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 hot. They're, they're, they're hot at the right time. Them and Gosh, I'm so pumped with them in Tampa round one. That's going to be a fun series. I can't wait to talk about that one in the next couple of days. So, Jack Adams, uh, Coach Q, Vesna Vassi. That's, that's my vote. Yeah, I think it's between those two for it. I think with me, I know some voters, I feel like they do tend to do this. It's not just stat-based. It's also stats plus emotional base for where this guy is. We need to get this guy this award. 
That's why if I had a vote, I know Andre Vasilevsky's going to be like unless if he gets injured, the dude's going to the Hall of Fame, and he's yeah. The best. So I think Flurry to further stamp that note on him, I would be like, I want to vote for him. I want to get him the Vezina, so it's guaranteed that no one's going to say, well, he doesn't have a Vezina. Should I put him in the first ballot? Like I'm just, I would want to get him that, so everyone's just like, okay, he has three cups, he has the Vezina, he right, right. Ballot. Should be in. That's more why I lean towards that. And I think some people might give it to him because he never got one. Where yeah. Brindamore's more the sentiment of everyone always says Rod Brindamore should have been higher than the Jack. At, like, like the years he's been making Carolina right. better. And Mike something. Sullivan should get some votes for that, too. Yeah, Sullivan, somebody I mentioned in the last video, too. Pittsburgh, yeah. everyone thought, would be fourth or out this year. Most people coming into the season because their team on paper did not look too sexy past the first two lines. Yeah. And then other guys have really started stepping up for them and actually played well. So yeah, and, and that's what happened. Yeah, they, and then some some people too like didn't even have Pittsburgh as a playoff team before the season. I, I thought they were gonna go to the playoffs, but I thought they would finish like third or fourth in the East, and then they win the East. The East is a hard, hard division. I think I think I had them fifth because of goaltending. I didn't know how uh, Yari, who did do terrible start in case you dismiss, saved their bacon, as Jim Jackson likes to say, yeah. um, where then Yari was able to stabilize himself and actually finish the season fairly well. But right. that's the reason I had questions. Their goaltending combined with their defense had questions coming into the seasons that then got answered by guys having their best seasons. So that definitely goes towards, yeah, Sullivan, I think, should be in the top three because when you pull the best out of Matheson Blue in Florida, Literally was useless. And you he actually looked good. And then CC had his best season with you. So I think looking at guys you got going, Capitan looks great in Pittsburgh. That that plays into mm-hmm. it. You got Nikas really going in Carolina. You got others really churning there. Brady Shea's playing his best defensive season of his career. So mm-hmm. all these guys have guys that really have come in. Duclair's looking really good as a guy that's a journeyman that can never really find his groove. Their rookie before. goaltender's been good in yeah, Carolina. The, yeah, the Dreger and Knight, whenever he's been in, has been good. It seems like all these coaches just know how to get the most out of people. That's why they should definitely be yeah. in the top three. So. Yeah, I hear I hear that. And, I mean, we already know that McDavid's going to win the Art Ross with 102 yeah. points. Um, I think he has two more games left, so that's going to end up being at least 105. Um, I mean, he's going to win the Hart. He's going to win the Lindsay. Let's not ever think that. And then Matthews already won the Rocket with – how many goals did he get? 40? Yeah, 40 goals. That, does he have any more games? He might have, like, one or two more. Um, I know the Canadian games got – oh, he has two more games. So, yeah, he'll finish with, like, at least 42 goals probably. Um, so those awards are out of the way. Uh, who would you have – we'll probably agree on it, but who do you have as your Calder? Uh, Kirill. Kirill Kaprizov. Yeah. I feel like the top three would have been different if some guys didn't get overplayed. I'm looking at you, Chicago. Um, and then, uh, other guys didn't get injured, such as Ty Smith. I feel like there could have been guys that pushed more, but because mm-hmm. of how the season played out, I-, I would definitely say it's Capri Saul because he's a huge reason why the Wild are one of the most surprising teams. And I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if Everson is actually the third nomination over, say, Sullivan or something, just because of how well the Wild have done as a yeah. potential Jack Adams. So, and he yeah, made I, them fun to watch, too. Like, they were boring for a while, and now it's Yeah, like, as soon as he came in, I was saying that last year to Pirlo and Steele, I'm like, this guy needs to be their actual head coach, not just interim, because he actually, just like Bonus kind of did with the Stars and got them kind of rejuvenated and looking like a fun hockey team to watch again, even though they didn't make it this year, they were still a pretty fun Yeah, they just messed out. After they got back from COVID and the um, destroyed in Texas. But that's what I like seeing in a coach, and both of those guys have done a great job. He got the most out of Kaprizov, who now has um, 27 goals for 51 points, 24 assists. And has looked good also, we must say. Uh, he's very great offensively, but the guy's not bad defensively if he has to make a play. Yeah, not it's too bad. He just came out of nowhere. It just seemed like he was just random, yeah. like just out of nowhere. It's like, who the hell is this guy? And then just goes off. Yeah, well, was, I think this shows how scouting has really ventured out now where before we had – only certain teams that really scouted, or certain GMs like Kakalainen, for example, that scouted Europe immensely well. 
Now you're seeing in the last, I would say probably eight to 10 years, teams really pick that up and go, these leagues are getting better by the minute. We need to really push our bar in scouting to the max more than we probably ever have. And I think you're seeing guys come up like a fifth round pick's going to win it. Sharon Govich was not an early round pick either, who might be in the top three for, uh, um, what's his name, New Jersey there. So he looks like a good goal scorer. So I think the scouting's definitely getting better, and that's just going to make the league overall better over time. Yeah, I, I hear that. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much Sen Stone. He'll get Calder. And then uh, the more interesting one would be who do you have winning the Selkie? That one's hard for me because I do eventually want to see a center not win it just to see a forward that deserves it. Like, for example, I mentioned one of my guys. Nakis is somebody that's been very good graded defensively. Uh, actually can play center if you want to slot him in there. He has in the past. But um, he does very good on both ends. Obviously, Mark Stone's someone that people have been shouting to the rafters for for a while now as a, a winger that could potentially get it. And I think both of those guys really do deserve one. And probably in time, Nakis might get one in his career. I feel like he might be a bit premature right now. He's still kind of new to the league where Stone is a known commodity. So I think if it goes to a winger, it would probably go to Stone. But my favorite player is also someone that is very highly nominated for the Selkie. So it's kind of pulling at my heartstrings who I want to go with, which is Dreisaitl. I feel like could be nominated for it. And they could have two of the better awards to win. You could have when we get to the Hart Trophy, we know we're both probably going to say McDavid. And you could have Dreisaitl for the Selke. You could have the offense and def- – which is basically how that goes. The offense and defense awards. Yeah. And that would be big for your team. So, right. I think Dre will win it, but I wouldn't mind if a winger like how great Nakis is playing defensively, shot blocking, uh, Corsi and his uh, – Star percentages and all that have been very good. Same with Stone. I feel like I would be fine with either of them winning it. I just feel like they're going to always go with a center. And Kopitar has won it in the past. I find a lot of similarities in Dreisaitl's game. I feel like it'll go to Dre. So you would. So you think Dreisaitl will win it? Yeah. I think. I think. Well, there's been a lot of push for Barkov. I think he's in that conversation. Um, Ryan O'Reilly's always in there a little bit. I would I would give it to Bergeron. I'm just blown away by his 62.2 percent faceoff wins. I'm I'm a faceoff guy because to me it just establishes the puck possession control of the game. I mean they may as well just rename the Selkie the Bergeron because he's either winning it every year or he's a finalist every year. The dude is just a master defensively as a forward, which is just so insane. Um, plus minus 27, 36 blocks, 35 takeaways. 62.5 Corsi, um, starts in the defensive zone, like a decent amount with 41.7%. So, I don't know. To me, I would just give it to Bergeron. I don't know if that's also the reputation influencing me, but I'm just looking at the numbers, and that's that face-off percentage is gorgeous. I'm like, man, if you want someone at the face-off dot in a critical time of possession towards the end of the game, or even over time, give me Bergeron, as that's the one person yeah. I want. Yeah, I think uh, awards, Bergeron kind of has the LeBron James effect with the Selkie at this point. (laughs) I feel like he has the, you want it too much, unless if you play like you're the second coming of Wayne Gretzky defensively, we might not give it to you at this point. Where, but, was um, Wayne, what, 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 but was Wayne Gretzky that good defensively back then? No, 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 no. I'm saying you play like how good Gretzky was. Oh, uh, okay. Defensively. Yeah, because based, based on what like older people tell me, because I guess the advanced no, Gretzky stats... was not that good defensively. I was using that analogy. More yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to make sure. I wasn't like trying to argue anything, because I know like from what the older people have told me, he was like okay defensively. Yeah, like, would, of those two would probably be better. Yeah, but... like I, I was, I was, I was told at least that Gretzky was good at like stripping the puck away and then just taking off with it. But I heard he was like so so face offs. But it kind of stinks because you don't get those stats from back in the day. You don't really know for sure. That's a good point. Yeah. That that I does think, think about it. I do think though, uh, both of the guys we said for the Selkie have a good chance. And as I said, if a winger does win it um i wouldn't be uh displeased some people would but i think there are some people that could deserve to get it and that's just the way i am of course my team sean couturier is the one that won it last year for the flyers that obviously won this year because they sucked but uh you know 
Um, <laughs> but we can move on now. Uh, we already went over our Vezina where E-Money, to recap, said that his was Vasilevsky. I said that mine would be Mark andre Flurry. Then we went over, we just went over our Selkie, of course, which I said I think will go to Dry but would be fine if it goes to Nakus and Stone. And then you went with Patrice Bergeron. And then we also went over the Jack Adams, which you said would be Coach Q, Joe Quint, Joel Quinville, for those that don't know. And then Rod Brindamore was mine. We can now move on to, um, we we'll go to before we go to the MVP, because that one's just. So, oh, actually, we'll just we already said the MVP. We already basically said that the MVP is Connor McDavid. I mean, yeah, we already, we already said like that. That's already been like thrown down our face so many times. Like it, they may as well just deliver it to him right now. Like here well, you go. Basically, compliments you on TSN makes an entire segment <laughs> for seven minutes about Wayne Gretzky complimenting <laughs> someone else. <laughs> yeah. That's when you know that dude should win the freaking MVP. Yeah, I saw. I, I saw on the NHL website today. They were like. <laughs> MVP debate. I'm like, there is no, there is no debate. It, it, there's, there's no, there's no yeah. debate whatsoever. It's what Connor McDavid. The there was, was if Chicago never lost relevance because he wouldn't have been there points total wise. But if Kane somehow got that Chicago team into the postseason, that's the only guy I felt. Even if he only had like 87, 89 points, they would have debated with because that team is not depth ridden at all. Like, there's not like you. Yeah, that team's not that good. It, so, like, if he somehow got them there, maybe that's the only guy. And I don't think that would have been that debatable just because of how his story. I, I've just never seen anybody play this good like McDavid. Yeah, he's doing better than what Kucherov did a couple years ago. Where yeah. Were like, well, they, 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 they said, too, like, if he – I'm trying to word this correctly. He was – he's on pace. Like, let's just say there was a full season this year. He's on pace for, like, 140 points or – Something astronomically insane like that. Um, I don't know, but anyway, uh, anyways, uh, I think we should go over Norris because that one is a pretty closely contested one. Yeah, um, I did see. We will agree on it though because I did see your post on. I forget if it was Twitter or Facebook. I think it was Facebook. I don't have Twitter. Yeah, I have Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, that you put the awards out on, and you put Adam Fox. I saw, which is the person that. I was going to go with just because it's kind of the same thing I said with my goaltending. Everyone kind of knows Victor Hedman's one of the best defensemen, if not the best defenseman in the league. He yeah. also won. So I feel like when you have this young guy that comes up and is looks like he's the next like best thing. Also, McCars obviously might be in the top three, too. So you have two young guys that yeah. look like the next best thing. And then you have a proven commodity there in Victor Hedman. I would just go with how good Adam Fox has been this year. Uh, last year, we saw him come up and what this guy is a game changer that can control the play and really do well. And then this year, he topped that in tenfold and almost had a 50-point season uh, yeah. at 47 points and a plus 19. Uh, his Corsi is almost at a 50 along with his Ozone uh, start stats. I yeah. think he full-handedly deserves to win it. My only concern with him is the whole his team didn't make the playoffs argument. Oh, I don't care about that. I mean, I think the whole playoff argument matters more with, like, the MVP kind of stuff. But, I mean, Fox took a whole nother level to his game, and I thought he was getting underrated last year. I thought he should have been top three in the Calder. I was saying it for, like, months now. Like, this dude's underrated. I was watching the NHL Network. I think it was Mike Johnson, but I can't remember who. Well, one of them had him top five in the when they did it instead of just the three. Like, who would you have in your top five? Like, top five for the um, Norris last year. They thought that's how good he played last year. Oh, wow. I mean, I don't know about all that, but like, in, at least Calder wise, I would have had him at three. But right now, I would have him winning the Norris because he already pointed out the points there. I mean, he's at 47 there, uh, five goals, 42 assists, plus minus 19. And like his O zone, D zone starts are all are almost 50 50 right down the middle. He plays on the penalty kill too, a pretty good amount. And one crazy stat with him. He has 102 block shots, like yes. way more than a bunch of people. And that's part of playing defense in hockey. So for me, watching all those numbers come together, and his Rangers team really isn't all that good. Like I think they would have made the playoffs if they were in another division. But defensively, they're not all that great. 
So yeah, to yeah. me, that like sways my decision more. Like, okay, I'm picking Adam Fox for Norris. That's who I would vote for. I can see Hedman getting a couple of votes. I mean, he has some good stats too. He has the reputation. I think he's the best overall defensive player in the world. But right now, this season, I'm voting Adam Fox for Nor- Norris if I could vote for that, whatever. But uh, not my job. But yeah, that would be who I would pick is Adam Fox. There's yeah, other guys in there too, like Shea Theodore, Kale McCarr, couple sorry, a couple other guys. I cut you off, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that's all there's also someone that Pirlo and I looked into his inner stats more where his coursey defensive blocks and I'm watching a couple highlights of him. I don't think it would be in the top three, but somewhere being in the top seven, just when you look at hockey reference afterwards for where guys finish when they put that marker on there. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if Uyghur gets some just because of how good his defensive stats are in Florida. He's not as much of an offensive guy, but it's kind of that defensive versus offensive yeah. thing comes into conversation when it comes to the Norris. Um, but I think Fox should get it. I, I don't agree with that whole he didn't make the playoffs argument, but I could see people not voting for him for that reason because I've seen it in the past and got pissed at award voters for not voting for someone for that reason. But I think he deserves it, too, because he's been very um, disciplined. Looking at this, he only has 14 penalty minutes, too, while playing a pretty good shot blocking. He's um, also, he's not like he's going to rough you up. He's only five foot ten, but if he, he's pretty yeah. good along the boards, too, at being able to get the puck away from players. So not taking penalties is a big bonus when you're able to play that game. And the crazy part of his 102 block shot stat is, he if he doesn't um he right now is even in block shots and shots on goal so he shoots the puck a lot and blocks the puck yeah a lot for your- he does it seems like he just kind of does a bit of everything um it's it's pretty incredible what he's done this year um rangers were a pretty fun team to watch i was hoping they would make the playoffs so my caps can play them again i want to see more violence so that was that was such an awesome game six fights um you weren't Wait, I don't think you were in the pot. No, it was me, Steele, and Perlo. We were predicting the amount of fights going into Wednesday's game last week. I said at least three. Yeah, it was three in the first two It seconds. was six. There were yeah. six. I think it was six fights, all of them in the first period, and then after Tom Wilson left the game, things kind of just cooled off. So, um, But anyways, I was hoping to see a Rangers cap series this year, but maybe sometime in the near future. So, oh, well. But um, anyways, I think that wraps up all of our awards. I'm like looking yeah. at my minutes. Yeah, that that wrapped us up. We went with the heart is obviously Connor McDavid. Yeah. Uh, we both agreed on. We both agreed on the Norris, uh, which uh, last year was Roman Yossi. Will go to Adam Fox this year. In our opinions, the mm-hmm. heart was st- is going to stay in Edmonton. Doesn't even have to relocate itself mm-hmm. and uh, go to Connor McDavid, and then the Vezina. Uh, transferring from Connor Hellbuck. I said Flurry. You said uh, Vasilevsky um, there. And then the rookie of the year will go from Cal McCarr to Kirill Kaprizov. We both agreed on there. And then when it comes to our Selkie, um, you said Patrice Bergeron. And I said I feel like it would go to Leon Dreisaitl, who will then take over from Sean Couturier, who won last year, where the year before for Jack Adams was Bruce Cassidy, who – I think we'll go to Rob Brindamore, and you believe John Quinville will win for Florida. So that recap, what we all said for our awards. Did you have any closing points you wanted to say, Imani? Um, nothing that I can really think of. Um, I would just say just stay in tune for our playoff predictions show. I think there's one or two more matchups that have yet to be determined, and uh, we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, yeah. Stay tuned for that with the Steel Flyers website. Subscribe over at steelflyers.com. Please like, comment, and subscribe here at Sports Fanatic News. I guess one going out question is what was your biggest surprise this season? I guess that's a good question to end on. Whether it was a team or a guy that really stepped up, who was your fun surprise to watch this year? Panthers. The Panthers as a whole. Yeah, that's what that's I, I would just say just based on like watching their film a little bit, um, seeing like a little tiny bit of their games like here and there not really a whole lot, but just like reading up about them, just like looking at the stats and how they're doing as a team. It's like, Oh wow. Like they're kicking butt this year. They're hot going into the playoffs despite losing Ekblad for the year. I'm super pumped for battle of Florida. That's definitely going to be up there for my most anticipated series um, going into the first round. So they, they've been, they've been quite a, 
pleasant surprise and just curious to see how it all goes down. Yeah, uh, mine's the other surprise team. I've really liked uh, our Rookie of the Year's team, uh, Kaprizov's Wild, because no matter what, even through some injuries, you've had the rookie Cockin and come in and play well. Cam Calvich played realistically one of his best seasons, if not his yeah. best, with Everson. So I think how everything's going there, I've always found it unfortunate that Minnesota's very good for college hockey, very good at times for their NHL team, but doesn't get as much of a hockey reputation as I feel like they should through the league. Like, Minnesota's a hockey town, and they're not talked about that much as a team, and I feel like if the team keeps going forward the way they're moving, a lot of people forget now that they even still have Marco Rossi since he was injured all season. You're going to have a player like Rossi coming into guys like Eric Sinek, who are actually getting to where you wanted them to get. Dean Everson somehow made Ryan Hartman a center. So, uh, he's really done a good job himself. And uh, I think that team has been a surprise team for me because of some of the things I mentioned, too. You move people around to play positions that I did not think would work, and they just work. So I think for more than just their success, but also for some of the things they did, uh, that would be a surprise team for me. But that would uh, about wrap us up. I figured that was just a fun question. People always like what people feel is a surprise to a season for them. Uh, hopefully we would do more with the guys of like an actual round the season wrap up too, where we kind of talk about our best surprises, what we like from the season. Stay tuned for that on Steel Flyers and also on this channel as we share our toll the channel. I thank E-Money for joining us. You can follow me at JJBoard26 on Twitter if you want to talk about hockey or any of the other uh, professional sports out there. Just hit me up. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody, and stay safe out there. Peace out.